What is going on guys? Custom Arsenal here today. I'm going to be giving you guys my full review on the FT Old Bogey. Now this review, if you guys are wondering, is not going to include fight footage. You guys can go check out flighttest.com and all the other people who reviewed it. There's a bunch of people. This is a very popular plane. I'm just going to go through what I think about the plane after flying it, building it, installing electronics, and things alike. So first thing we're going to do, go over some build notes. Second off, we're going to go through electronics. And third off, we're going to go through my flight experience. So the build was a very, very great great time and i thought that it was great because it had two sheets of foam overall it i know the plans say it's going to take three and a half but if you do it frugally meaning that you cut out all the pieces from the paper and then just line them up and try to save as much foam as possible you can do it in under two sheets with of course some scraps and i thought that was really nice because i i know that a lot of people uh, don't want to go out and buy an extra sheet of foam board or maybe they don't have three sheets of foam board and saving some is always nice now i was actually planning on making a full beginner series highlighting how to scratch build, which electronics to choose, and things of the like, but I ended up just going and scrapping that because of my flight experience. So I already filmed all that, but it didn't quite work out. But anyway, I would give the build about five stars, maybe maybe 4.9, just because uh, there are some areas that are a little bit older on this, like you can see it has like the puzzle piece design, and I think that that is nice, but it didn't look as nice as the uh, newer kind of like fold over paper design. If you guys know what I'm talking about, um, you probably will if you have built flight test planes. But overall, I thought the uh, poly, uh, polyhedral and the wings worked really well out um, for this application. Uh, it's really, really sturdy setup overall, and I... I, like I said, cannot complain about the build. Now, one thing that I do have a few grips about is this landing gear, and every single plane that I've built that has this landing gear, it always is not very accurate, and I, as much time as I put into it, it never really works out. Um, so I recommend going ahead and being precise as possible, maybe even gluing this thing down. I like the suspension idea where it has a little bit of give to it with these rubber bands, but overall, this landing gear wire wasn't very strong for me. So let's go ahead and talk about electronics. Now, my total electronics cost on this thing was $2 for the servos in the back. Then I had a $15 receiver, so that's $19, plus a $15 motor system, which is another uh, 44, which is $44, to, or $34 total, plus a $10 battery, making it about $45 if you're adding tax, um, plus this $2 airframe, which was around, uh, which makes it around $50 total for you to make and build this plane, assuming that you already have a transmitter to bind a receiver to. So that was really nice. I tried to make it budget because that was the idea of my beginner series. Now let's go ahead and take off the wings and I'll show you guys what I've got going on inside. So wing just comes off right like that. Very, very sturdy. So we got a Lemon RX DSMX uh, six channel receiver. Works really great, uh, no complaints there. Then I've got a Hobby Power uh, 30 amp ESC in there as well as a generic A2212 10,000 uh, 10, KV motor or yeah. No, one, yeah, 10,000 KV. Um, so yeah, really, really simple setup. Uh, again, this was a very, one of those very cheap setups that I just decided to pull the trigger on. It hasn't let me down yet. There's a little bit of motor cogging, um, but it's worked well, especially with this motor paired by, um, with this is a 10 inch prop that I cut down a little bit. But you guys, uh, I recommend a nine by four, seven slow fly or a nine by six. So in the back, we've got two SG90, uh, Tower SG90 servos. They are valued about $2 a piece, if, if that. Um, I got these in a 10-pack on Amazon for $18, which I think is a steal for these things. So I'll have a, the links to all this stuff where you can get every single part I used to make this plane in the description below. Now, for the electronics mounting, if you guys watched the original build, you know that these servos go up in here on the servo tray. And there's a ridiculous amount of push rod that it takes to go from right here back to right here. So I went ahead and skipped that, and I just mounted my servos right back here and that made it so i could use a paper clip for my push rods and it worked really well um and it doesn't make doesn't bend at all like this would so i have no complaints overall after um just doing this setup so i recommend that if you don't have push rods use paper clips for sure and find another way to mount your servos because it's not very hard now i did have to use a little bit of extension to get to the receiver but uh not really a big deal overall so uh, that is pretty much it for the electronics. Again, having had no issues at all, pretty much an, uh, an advanced setup. I put on this thing lots of throws, and there's a lot of power on this motor um, for a B pack, but uh, either way, it works. So let's go to the flight experience. Uh, I think that this plane flew really well for a beginner. Now, it did not fly great, but it flew pretty well. Um, I was able to control it completely in the air, 
any attitude I wanted was able to do, um, except for like ailerons and all that stuff, which uh, I was quite surprised on the rudder control, how you can do these like Dutch rolls, as I think Josh Bixler calls them, but they were really nice. I had a pretty, pretty good time flying. It was a lot of fun, even though I couldn't really get it to fly scale. There's a lot of wiggle in this plane when you're flying it, and it takes a lot for even the advanced pilot to try to uh, correct that and make it fly straight. Once you did get it trimmed out, it flew great, uh, nice, and straight like an arrow, but when it came to turning, it still had a little bit of wiggle, which was kind of annoying. Now, I can do touch and goes all day with this thing, and that's one thing that really applies for me because I love taking off and landing. That's one of my favorite parts of this hobby. It's just so fun to take off um, from the ground, you know, just like a real plane, and then land it right back down, nice and smooth. Um, a good landing it will always have me smiling. So. Uh, overall, I think this is a great plane for a beginner. Um, you're not going to be super impressed by the flight characteristics, but as you improve, you will definitely uh, be able to fly this thing and have a bunch of fun every time you advance in your skill. Now, for the advanced pilot, I would recommend uh, staying away unless you really, really want a plane that you're going to have to tune in to make it fly scale. Now, beginners hopefully aren't worried about scale, but uh, advanced pilots, you're really not going to be able to fly advanced lines with this plane. So that's it. For you guys, this that is my review of the FT Old Bogey from Flight Test. I'll have links to this speed build kit down below as well as the free plans on the Flight Test website and anything else I mentioned, all these parts and components. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys in the next video, hopefully coming out in a few days.